Hey everyone, it's your friend Think Noodles, and welcome to my full walkthrough for Pop Tropica Lunar Colony. Please take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Pop Tropica walkthroughs with full audio commentary. As soon as you land in Lunar Colony, run to the right. You'll need to talk to this guy here, and he'll set you on your mission. Run over to the right, and we're going to go into Mission Control. And just go right in the front door, and you're going to meet two people in Mission Control, and they're going to be overworked, and you're going to see an astronaut who's not feeling so well. So talk to each of them. And once you talk to both of them, the director is going to come in and tell you to go help the astronaut. So just click on him and select the bottom option and then run to your left and exit mission control. Now run to your left back to where the guy was on the stage and he'll have left and he'll leave behind a bottle of ginger ale. Pick up the bottle of ginger ale. Now, head to your right. And go all the way to the launch pad. Now, click the elevator and it'll bring it down. Jump onto the elevator platform and click it again to go up. And this will take you to the top of the rocket. Go into the rocket. And now just click on him and open up the ginger ale and give it to him and he'll feel better. Now he'll ask you to hold on to his helmet and he'll disappear and make you take the mission. Pick up the headset and they'll tell you what you're supposed to do now. Now just adjust this one on the right to 4150 and it might be a little bit tough but you'll eventually get there just uh, click it little by little and once you've done that one you're going to want to do the one on the left and adjust it for 4150 as well. There we go. Now you'll want to direct your attention to the fuel tank switch at the upper left. You can see it going down on the left, 50, 49, 48, 47. Uh, when that gets down to around 5, you're going to want to click where my mouse is right now and switch over to the second fuel tank. There we go. Now go down and flip the switch below it to jettison the tank. And this right one will go down as well. And while that happens, adjust this to 112 degrees 
which is a lot easier than the other two. There you go. And you can press this morale boost button and the, uh, the bobblehead pops up on your windshield. Now you can see the second fuel tank is running down quickly. All you need to do is release it and then you'll float into space for a little bit. Now we'll get in contact with some asteroids and you're going to have to fly through the asteroid field. It's fairly easy and you can hit a couple of them and not really have any problem. Just make your way through them as best you can and nudge any out of the way. Now you're through the asteroid field, and we're going to have to repair that hole that you see on the bottom of the ship. So you'll need to go through to the left, go to the toolkit and pick it up. And then you'll want to go back to the right and down and stay close to the ship because asteroids do come and you don't want to get hit by one. And you'll just go right along the side of your ship and click on the hole. Now you'll just fill it with some putty and just keep filling it until it tells you that you put enough. There you go. Now they'll automatically fly you to the moon's orbit and then you're gonna have to do the moon lander which is not all that easy. Click start and the moon lander will drop out of the rocket and just keep your mouse directly over it to keep it going straight down and just as you start to get lower you want to click to boost it so it doesn't crash to the ground it takes a little bit of getting used to so you may crash four or five times first now that you're on the uh, moon walk through the airlock and run to your right and head into the barracks we'll get into the vehicle bay in a minute Run to your right and jump up the ladder here and you're going to want to go to the third level. This one right here. Yeah. Now you'll notice this is an open locker. You pull out the photo album and pick up the book. You don't really need to read them now, but if you want to know a little bit more about the island, you can. Now yeah. climb the ladder and go up to the top level on the left. These are, the, these are the obelisks that we're going to find later. And you're going to want to run to the left here and click the computer screen that's on. Now you'll want to press this pattern. Stop. Auto reverse. And record. This will reboot the computer. Now the vehicle bay doors are locked. Just drag it up to open the vehicle bay and exit. This is the only way to unlock the airlock in the vehicle bay. Now exit the barracks and go into the vehicle bay. Now we have the door open 
and we can access the moon vehicle, but it doesn't have any power. So we're going to use solar power to power it up. And you go there and click that, and it opens the bay doors. Now you have these satellite dishes that are reflecting the light. So just bend this one down a little bit, and it'll hit the next one. And all you have to do with that one is, yeah. let me get up there. Point it down at the vehicle bay, the vehicle's one, and it charges it up. It's a solar powered rover. Now, just head out, and you'll automatically exit the vehicle bay. Yeah. All right, now we're on the moon. So the first thing you want to do is head pretty much straight up to the next building. You can do them in kind of any order, but this is the most efficient way to do it. So we'll start here, and there's a meteor blocking entrance. So click on the winch hook uh, from your rover and jump up and hook it on the meteor and you'll drag it out of the way and then you can run your left. Now this one's easy to get into because the eye scanner is broken because of the meteor. Now we're in the lab and there are two things you have to do here. First, you need to go to the retinal change and this will change the color of your eyes. So you want to go in here and you want to choose violet or purple because you'll need that to get through the eye scanner. Now that you change your eyes, you're going to want to go up to the pressure chamber and go in here and what you'll want to do is click the high pressure and it'll shrink you down and you see if you click the low one, it'll make you taller, but that's no help. So put it on high pressure and make yourself shrink and then quickly run over to your left and drop down. There's this tiny area you can't get through otherwise, so just run to your left and jump up and over the blocks. There you go. Now get in here and we're in the infirmary. Now the infirmary is sort of a maze and what you need to do is grab this hose which has a finite length and you'll want to jump up and into this circular maze and follow my route for the most efficient way to get there and your hose will still reach. There we go and you flip it around and you drop down here and oops you want to get through that one there. There we go and drop down here and here you are on the maintenance shaft and then just click the hose to the exhaust vent and it will pop the locator out. Alright now you don't have to go all the way back that way uh, if you run to your left, there's a little bio waste exit. Just use that. It's quicker. Now let's head out of this building and we're going to go to the next one. Jump in your lunar rover and you're going to want to head to the bottom left of your map. All right, here's the building, and it's kind of a uh, hydroponic biodome here. And this one doesn't have any security, so you can just enter the airlock. Now there's no gravity, so you're going to be floating around, and uh, you'll want to treat it pretty much like swimming. That's, uh, that's how the physics work here. So what you need to do is imme immediately go to the cork dispenser, and you're going to have to cork off a few things. So pick up the first cork and you'll see these air vents shooting out air and you just want to come up behind them and stick the cork in. They block the route that you need to float by so you have to keep going back and getting the corks one by one. And here's this one. And it's easiest if you can get behind it otherwise you'll have to time it to put the cork on when it's not spewing out air.
this part's a little dreary. It takes a while because you move so slowly. But as you'll see in the bonus quest, this is actually more exciting than the bonus quest because the bonus quest is just boring repetition over and over. Here we go to the last one up at the top here, and this one doesn't stop, so you definitely want to get it from behind or else it's going to blow you out of the way. There we go. And then you'll go up. And if you had visited here before going through the lab um, and finding the locator, she would not have appeared here. So uh, you definitely need the locator before she appears here, so you have to go get that first. Otherwise, this area will be empty. So now you'll talk to Salerno, and uh, she won't want to come with you. And there she goes, and you see she dropped the key card right there. So as soon as the airlock closes again, just uh, float back and pick up the key card. You're going to need it for the next building. So unfortunately, there's no way to get out of here quickly. So what you need to do is uh, just float your way out. But you can go on the right along the uh, along the edge there. So it's a little quicker, but it's still painfully slow since you float the whole way. Head through the airlock. All right, now your rover is going to chase her rover, and she's going to actually lead you to the last building. And since we have the key card and we already changed our, our retinas to violet, we can get in. Okay, just click the eye scanner, and it'll verify your identity. And we can go through the airlock. Now these conveyor belts, you just kind of angle them to get through. Um, so you angle this first one down and run across. And then the next one, you want to change the direction. And then angle it down and run across. And same thing, change the direction, angle it down, run across. Now if you make them straight, there are actually some cool experiments with rocks that you can check out, but if you don't feel like it, you don't have to, and it's not required to beat the level. So you'll just keep doing the same thing over and over. Change direction and move this one up. And you're just trying to end up on the upper right. There we go. And that's it. So you'll go in here and uh, you'll realize that she put the locator on this robot and we're not gonna find her this way. So what you need to do is run to your right and uh, jump up in the middle here and uh, jump up to the upper platform and click on that and that'll fall down. So now just run up the pipe and click on the sheet and you'll find a Geiger counter. Now I was trying to figure out all kinds of ways to make this move and you just have to push it. I was trying to make the, the claw up there move and pick it up, but yeah, you just have to slide it across. Now get in your rover and use the Geiger counter to guide you to the final alien stone. And it's fairly easy. It's actually almost due south of this building. Uh, right here you'll see it's not very far away and you see as it's getting red, 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 and there it is. So now you just run to your left run to your left and uh, you'll click on it it'll say it's buried in the ground we already know what to do because we've used the winch on the rover so just drag it over and you will pull it out of the ground and when you do you'll see the light appear and that's the newest thing because the fourth one uh, to come up 
actually is showing a light. So what you need to do is jump in your rover and follow that beam. So just follow that beam exactly. Uh, there we go. Come on, catch up to the beam. There we go. Now just follow it along and you'll find a spot where they cross. Just click enter and Salerno will show up. Here she comes and she'll start digging to show you that she's not crazy and that there really are aliens on the planet. So here you go and then something happens. Of course she was right, <laughs> there is something strange going on here. So nothing to be afraid of, just run across and uh, you'll notice a few things like our evolution. And just keep going. And we'll be right back here in a second. Now just run to your right and kind of press your hand into that slot and you'll see that there's a portal and she's going to go through it. Whether we know where it goes or not, she's going to take it. And there she goes. Don't worry, <laughs> we'll hear from her in a second. Now they bring you back home to Earth or Pop Tropic Island, whichever. And everyone's a little down and sad that you guys that they miss her. But they notice an incoming message. And there she is, smiling big and mission accomplished. She found extraterrestrial life. And here comes the director of the space agency. And he's going to congratulate you for making people more interested in the space agency. And your special accommodation is, of course, the island medal. And that's the end of the island. Now you want to start the bonus quest. Just click start and wait through the whole cutscene. Now you have the alien codes and you're going to want to want, run to your left and find Alan Turing. So head out of the building and run to your left back to where we started. Now after you run past the gift shop you'll notice a bus. Jump on the bus and we can go to the Shady Pines retirement home.
Now run to your right and click the bell. Now his is coded, but it's always 3A. So just rearrange the letters so they say Alan Turing. So just click on them until you get the right one. And then click 3A. And Alan Turing will answer you and give you a great quote from Star Wars. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, actually. And he'll help you with the encoded transmissions. Now that you're back at Mission Control, he'll work with you and he'll just show you the basics of the transmissions. There's four transmissions to do and they're relatively easy. Actually, he says elementary and it's true. All you really have to do is spell out the alphabet. Um, he'll give you the first one, which is A, and uh, if you click help again, he'll give you B as well. So you see he chooses A and he puts it in the top left. And you see if I press the help button, he will do it again and give me B. There we go. B. Now, you just keep going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you just follow it uh, in the alphabet pattern. And it's actually pretty dull. Uh, you just do it and you get another message and you do the same thing again and again and again, and it takes a while. And I actually found it quite boring. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this part up for you guys. You guys can see what I'm doing since I'm doing it so many times. And you can just mimic it, but there's no reason for you guys to sit through this for like the next 5 or 10 minutes. And uh, I'll put on the music and I'll speed it up to like 4 times speed so it only takes like 2 or 3 minutes.
please take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you guys again soon, and thanks for watching.